In this video, we're going to cover how to build a query in Google Sheets that can query off of multiple and unrelated data sets in the same query. And they adjust based on the data set selection box that we have here. So I have currently two options, inventory or active orders. Now they are semi-related, but the data sets are different in the sense that they have different fields, different headers, uh, different values. So you can see on this first tab, I have an inventory data set that just lists all of our inventory items. On the second tab, I have active orders for office supplies. And this, what you see here on this query tab is the finished product of what we're actually gonna build today. So as I said, we can select which data set we want to query off of. Right now it's currently set to active orders and beginning in cell D5, we have the query output for that data set. Over here to the left, I have column selections specific to that active orders. So if I wanted to uncheck some of these columns, our query updates automatically and displays only the columns we tell it to. So now I can also switch this to inventory data set and you can see our column selections update automatically as well as our query. And the same holds true here. I can deselect certain columns selections and display only the columns that I want. In addition, I have a where condition box up here. If it's currently empty, it just pulls back everything. But if I wanted to filter this query output, I can simply state my where condition right here. I might want to see anything that has quantity on hand of less than 5,000. And you can see our query updates automatically. If I want to reset this and pull back everything, I can just simply delete out that criteria. So we'll get started here. The first thing I wanna do is add a new tab where we're gonna build our query from scratch. So we'll call this query two. And now what I wanna do is go to our two first tabs, the data set tabs, select all the columns, and we're gonna name each of these column ranges. So I'm going to go up to data and then about midway down is named ranges. So I'm going to call this first one inventory, click done. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the orders tab. We'll call this active orders and you can't have spaces between words for named ranges. So if you need to use space, use an underscore. So now back on our query tab, I want to add a title here that says select data set and we're going to create our drop down menu. So I'm going to go up to data, data validation. I'm going to select this second option list of items and this allows you to enter your list manually separated by a comma. So in here, we're going to insert our named ranges. So we have the inventory named range and the active orders. I'm going to hit save and now we have our drop down menu. So now I'm going to add another title here for column selections. So here, what we want to do is reference our named ranges in cell A3. And to do that, we're going to use the indirect function because when you refer to a named range with the indirect, it actually pulls in that range as if you clicked on it. So I'm going to insert A3 and you can see it pulls everything from the inventory data set. But what we want to do here is only pull in the headers and display those headers vertically. What we want to do is first nest this within the array constraint function. 
and that does exactly what you think it does. It constrains an array output to the number of rows and columns you specify. So the first input is our input range, which we already have. It's the output that we currently have with our indirect of our named range. So now what we want to specify is the number of rows. We only want to display one because we just want the headers and the number of columns. Well, on the inventory, I know we have five columns, but on the active orders, we have seven. So I'm going to put the max of the two. And now this displays only the headers. But now what we want to do is flip this to be vertical. So we're going to say transpose our output and that will change it from horizontal to vertical. And if I change this to active orders, you can see it updates automatically. So now what I want to do is add checkboxes to the right. So I'm going to select in any cell here, go up to data, data validation again. This time I'm going to select this last option, checkbox, hit save. So I'm going to check this. I'm going to select that and hit control shift down arrow, or I'm sorry, it's just shift down arrow and then control D to copy it down. So now what we want to do is add an if condition so that we pull back the column letter in this column C if this checkbox is selected, which if it's selected, it has a value of true. If it's unselected, it has a value of false. But we also have a situation where on some of these um, column selections, you can see there might not always be a column value there. So we have two criteria. One, that there's something here in this cell, and two, this checkbox has a value of true or checked. So we have an if statement with an and. Now an and is just two logical expressions. So our first criteria is if a6 does not equal nothing or empty. The second is b6 equals a value of true. So we'll close out our AND statement. We're back into our IF statement now. We have our test, the logical expression, and now we want to do something if that condition is true. So what we want to do is display the column letter specific to that field. So that would be column A and then a comma. Otherwise, we want nothing there, which would be just double quotes. So we want to fill this down. Now, the only thing I need to do is edit this so that we get our different column letters that are relative to each of these headers. see we have more with the active orders. So we have column F and then column G. So now beginning in D5 we're going to insert our query. So we have our query and the first input is the data set we want to query off of. Well again we're going to reference the value here with the indirect function. So now we have our second input, which is our select statement. We want to select any of these columns here if the checkbox is checked and there's a value in column A. So really all we need to do is link these cells to our select statement. So we're going to have to first end our select statement with a double quote and come out of it and then use the AND symbol to join it to these cells. So our first cell is C6 
and I'm just going to paste the AND symbol, reference these cells, paste AND symbols, and keep on going until we're done. Now, as you know, the number of columns we have is always going to be an unknown. We could select different columns, and even if we always kept all the columns selected, they're going to change based on our data set selection. So the way you get around that is you add a blank column onto the end of your select statement. The way you add a blank column well, first I'm going to add a double quote to go back into our select statement. But a blank column is a single quote space single quote. And then I'm going to close out our select statement with a double quote. So the final input is the number of row headers we have in our data sets, and that's one for both. So I'm going to close this out and see how this looks. So you can see this pulls back everything. And if I select inventory you can see it updates automatically now you can see our blank column here on the end is it displays a double quote and parentheses so if you want to not display that what you can do is after you reference that column we can use the keyword label you reference that again with a single quote space single quote and then relabel it as what you want to display. I want to display nothing, so we're just going to have single quote, single quote. So it's single quote without spaces in between, and that will remove that column header. So now we can unselect any of these items we don't want to display, and our query updates automatically. We can do the same for active orders. You can see now I only display invoice and subtotal tax and order total. So the last thing we're going to do is add like a where condition uh, box up here. So maybe we'll just give it the, we'll just call this query criteria. Over here, we'll just type in something. Maybe we'll look at the quantity column, which is column D, where D is greater than one. And right now, this cell is not linked, so we need to link it to our select statement. So the where condition goes right after the column selections and keep in mind I know it's kind of hard to see but the last column is this blank column we have right here the single quote space single quote right before the label so that is where we need to enter a double quote on each side of that to come out of our select statement and use the and symbols to join that to our where condition cell which is D2. So you can see our query updates now based on this condition. And if I want to reset that and pull back everything again, all I have to do is delete this out because there's really nothing in our where condition now. If you like what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.